Hi, Robin Heppel here together with Brian Young. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about funeral home websites built with search engine optimization from the ground up to help you achieve top Google rankings. Welcome to Strategy Talks by Funeral Results Marketing, where funeral professionals discover the latest marketing strategies that get results. Now join Robin Heppel and Brian Young as they share their insights and experiences to help you and your firm during these ever-changing times in the funeral profession. Well, welcome to another episode of the Strategy Talks by Funeral Results Marketing. Now, before we dive into today's topic, I wanted to let you know to stick around to the end of the show to find out how you can get a free SEO audit of your funeral home website to see how you're competing and how you can improve your ability to rank on Google. And with that, it is time to jump into our show. We're going to talk about search engine optimization focused websites built from the ground up with SEO as one of their core focuses. And today to talk to us about that, we'll be interviewing and hearing from Robin Heppel, who is the president here and our chief guru of marketing, especially online marketing. So to get started, Rob, I'd like to ask just for an overview for those who don't really know, what is search engine optimization and why is it so important? Sure, Brian, thanks. Um, well, SEO or search engine optimization is the practice or the focus of things that uh, business owners can do to make sure that their websites rank high in the search engines, whether it be Google, um, most importantly, probably 70 to 80 percent of the traffic is um, is comes through Google. And but even, uh, you know, Bing and uh, and some other search engines as well. But uh, generally speaking, if you focus on the best practices for Google, they're going to tra- they're going to transact over into the other search engines. Some of the factors are what we call on-site SEO, where these are adjustments that can be made to your website, and then the other set of factors are called off-site SEO. And the reason why this is important is that being at the top of Google in the search results is kind of like the equivalent of having the biggest and best yellow page ad 10 years ago. Now, the reason why this is important, especially um, having search engine optimization built from the ground up when a website's being developed, is that many sites are not SEO friendly out of the box. And, uh, and they seem to be always trying to catch up. Uh, my philosophy and our philosophy is, well, if you're going to build a website, you want to make sure that you have all these factors in mind as you're building it. So they're just, it's just holistically baked in to your website. Now it's broken into two parts. So there's on-site SEO, and these are factors that are pertaining to your website itself. And then there's off-site SEO, which are uh, external factors that that help the ranking of your website. Now, 25% of the factors are on-site SEO and 75% are off-site SEO. Now, the reason though that we want to focus on the the 25%, the on-site SEO, it is the foundation. So, without a solid foundation, your the 75% isn't going to be as effective. So, it's just like building a house either on a solid foundation or building it on sand. And so we're going to focus on the 25% on-site SEO that's going to give you that foundation to then continue to help your website rank higher in the search results. Okay. So what I hear you saying is that on-site SEO is actually, in essence, weighted more heavily than off-site SEO. So what is on-site SEO? What should we know about that? Well, again, these are the adjustments and optimizations that could be made on your website. Now, when uh, when people, if they were to do some research and just ask, you know, what's more important, on-site or off-site SEO, most of the results out there are going to say off-site SEO. But in the SEO community, it's just assumed that anyone building a website is going to have on-site SEO already built in. So generally speaking, it's a no brainer. Unfortunately, in the funeral industry, uh, a lot of the companies that have more of a technology mindset, the web development companies think of, uh, SEO as an afterthought. 
uh, ourselves as a marketing company, we feel that r- ranking high in Google is a major marketing uh, goal that we want to have. And that's why we incorporate it from the, from the ground up. Now, what we're going to go through are some key components of, uh, of on-site SEO. And the first thing is the keywords. And uh, keywords for funeral homes purpose are broken into two groups. They're what we call the category keywords. Category keywords would be f- words like funeral, funeral homes, funeral services, and then cremation, cremation services, cremation costs. Those would be category keywords, basically the industry that we're in. And then there's the geographical keywords. And this, this would be, uh, location references such as city or town or other geographical references. And this, the combination of the two is what, um, the SEO community calls local SEO. So it's not just being a national brand trying to rank for, you know, a pair of shoes or something that's uh, widely av- available. Uh, no matter where you are, when you're looking at a local business, whether it's a funeral home or a restaurant or an automotive garage, that falls into the local SEO category, which you need the combination of your category keywords and your geographical keywords. Then there's the overall site structure, meaning how the content is organized. And for most funeral home websites, this is pretty well a given. Uh, we have our general, uh, website components. We're going to have, uh, we're going to have this, there's going to be, um, kind of an about section with, uh, some history, some staffing. Uh, there's going to be the services that we offer, uh, funeral cremation and maybe talk about, um, also pre-planning. There's going to be merchandise with the different, uh, products that are available. And then there's maybe some other resources such as uh, grief and estate planning and, um, and then general contact information. So, and other, other resources. Uh, so those components are, are pretty well a given. Uh, now it all depends. So how well those are written, making sure that we go back and have our, uh, our keywords, um, displayed throughout those pages of the website. Now, as we get in, and this is going to get a little more technical, um, we're going to talk about title tags and um, title tags, including the the website's title and the page titles. Uh, you want to make sure that you have your category and your geographical keywords present. And there's a simple test for this. Uh, if you go to your uh, go into Google into your search bar and type in the word site. S I T E followed by a colon and then without any spaces, I type in your domain name. So site colon heppelfuneral.com and then hit enter. And this is going to show you a few things on this page. This is going to show at the very top how many pages Google has indexed for you. And we'll talk about why that's important in a moment. Uh, but then it's going to give you a listing of all of your all of your pages that Google is aware of, uh, starting most likely with your homepage and then probably obituary pages, because it's going to show them kind of in ranking of how they, they feel they're the most, uh, the most important. But what it's going to show you is it's going to show you the page title. Then it's going to show the, uh, the URL, uh, meaning the, the link to that, to that page and then a little snippet of, and we call that the description of, which is a basic overview of that page. What's most important here when we're doing that is the title of the page. So if you just see titles that say funeral services or pre-planning or contact us without anything else, then that's a very poor site structure. What you should see is funeral services, and then some form of, um, of break. Uh, we like to use uh, a straight vertical line called the pipe, which is uh, on most keyboards immediately above the enter key. If you, uh, there's the backslash, and then if you hold the shift key down, that's the pipe. So it would say 
funeral services, pipe, and then Heppel Funeral Home, and then maybe either comma, Victoria, BC, or pipe, Victoria, BC. Uh, so you're getting uh, the name of the page, uh, the title of the of the website, which is the name of the funeral home, and then the geographical location as well. Now, you, you could get into this and manipulate them individually, but generally speaking, that's it's much better to have it that way than just to have funeral services because you do have, so what's that? What that is representing is your category keywords, but it's not representing your geographical geographical keywords, which would be your location. Uh, it also shows the URL, and we'll talk about that in uh, in just a moment moment as well. So the site colon test is is very easy to uh, to perform. Then there are um, other what we call meta tags, and there's the heading tags and formatting. Now, just like it was in in school when we were in, uh, uh, well, probably even in elementary school when we first started. Uh, working on our writing and grammar and in English class in high school, you know, we were always taught to have our most important thoughts in the beginning of the story and also at the end of the story. Uh, drill down a little bit. The first line of a paragraph is the most important, and the last line of the paragraph is second most important. Uh, and then the, the the internal part just adds context. So this is how Google reads pages as well. So Google's going to think if you're going to title a page, something. Uh, so you're going to give it a title and then you're going to talk about whatever that topic is uh, in the in the first part of the page and then recap it in the bottom part of the page and then even drilling further, um, you know, how that's applied to, to paragraphs. Google's going to get the sense of what this page is all about. And uh, by using some of the formatting, such as what we call these um, these these heading tags, such as, uh, and you can see these heading tags when you're in your Microsoft Word document, and you can create a heading one tag, a heading two tag when you're writing a report. This is the exact same thing. So you're, you might hear the term H1 tag. That would be the title tag. Uh, the H2 tag could be a section heading. Uh, paragraph headings could be H3 tags. Uh, and Google will read this and see, extract from that, oh, this is what this page is about. And now you want to be careful though, that although we have to think that Google's watching, when someone's on that page, you know, hopefully a prospect that's going to use your funeral home, we want to write to them. So we don't want to be just stuffing all these keywords in all of those because it's not going to, uh, it's not going to be very, uh, the readability will be very poor. And it'll sound that you probably have poor grammar, so that's not going to help you either. And also Google, you know, Google has the smartest engineers in the world working for them. So uh, it, I will never think to try to outsmart them. So they want you to write as if you're writing to, uh, to humans as well. But in the background, just know we want to make sure that when we can, we want to highlight the words that we're using. Uh, and this can even go down to uh, bolding certain words. Again, you want it to be for the humans, but in the back of your mind thinking, hey, if I bold this word, it's Google's going to presume that that word means has a, just a little bit more importance than the other words on the page. So, so that's, that's in a nutshell, the basic page composition. So we're looking at the, how we're going to title the page, uh, and the different subheadings of the page, and then even writing the text uh, of those pages as well. That's why it's it's not a good idea to have all of your services on one page. So if you have funeral services on one page, and then cremation services on another on that same page, and then uh, you know, burial services on that page, and gravesides on that page, well, you just you know, all things being equal, you've taken that page about funeral services and you've now watered that down. So instead of that page being 100% about funeral services, you now have that only being 
say 25%, and then 25% about cremation, 25% about burial, 25% about graveside. Uh, and then, you know, there could be, I, sometimes I see even more. So it would be better to have those four or five pages broken out into their own pages so that they are then standalone 100% about funeral services, 100% about cremation services, 100% about gravesides. And so as you're building out your site, just, you know, think of that. Sometimes think, oh, we'll just put it all on one page. Uh, nowadays, most websites, the ones that we build anyway, uh, there's no cost for additional pages. So you can have as many pages as you want. Uh, you want to make sure that, uh, you know, it's just not a paragraph on there. You want to aim to have at least three, 300 words or so on that page. And, uh, you know, then again, formatting it properly. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're maybe doing just a brief little audit of your, of your website itself. So think, oh, you know, we've added, we've lumped all of our, all of our services together. And that's why that page probably won't rank for those current terms because they're, you know, you've kind of watered them all down. We find this too, the same. If you have a firm and maybe you have two or three locations uh, in maybe different towns or cities and um, but they're all on one page. So if you have, um, so if we're thinking about um, uh, Washington State, you might have uh, a location in uh, Everett, Washington, you might, which is north of Seattle. You might have a location in Seattle and you might have a, a location in Tacoma, which is south of Seattle. If you put all of those locations on the same page, then you're going to, you're watering your location or your geographical keywords down by a third instead of having an individual page for each one of those locations. So hopefully you're kind of getting the gist of how these work together, your category keywords and your geographical keywords. Now what I'd like to talk about is the structure of your URLs. So the URLs are the domain name and then forward slash and then whatever the name of the page is. Uh, when you do your site colon search, you'll see how the, how those, uh, URLs are formatted and, uh, hopefully they're in using the word. So heppelfuneral.com forward slash funeral dash services. That would be ideal. Um, because if, because Google's going to think, oh, well, if they're going to, use certain words as their URL, that must be important. What Google doesn't like is when it's a auto-generated page with a bunch of weird characters and numbers that don't make any sense at all. So if you can, you want to have a system that actually uses words in the, uh, in the URL. And when we have a few future ap episode about offsite SEO, uh, when we, and we're going to be talking, we talk about this term called anchor text, meaning if if there's a a word that's highlighted or linked to go back to your website, if it's a link to your funeral services page, your keywords are actually going to be in that URL. So that's going to even help just a little bit more for that page on your site to to rank higher. So. Um, so you want to make sure that your URLs contain words and it's best that they're separated by, um, by the, by dashes or hyphens. And you can eliminate, you know, some of those, uh, kind of in between words like, um, you know, with and of and ah, uh, the, those can be taken out. Just have the kind of the core words that you want in to describe that page. Now there's some other, um, items on your website that you want to make sure are in place. Uh, and one of them is called a robots text file. And uh, I like to talk about this as kind of like the traffic cop. So this is a, uh, a file, like just a small little file in the root of your website uh, directory. And it's the first thing that search engines will read before they kind of enter, you know, these web spiders that go in and crawl your site. The first thing that it's going to read is the, is the robots text file. And I like to call it the traffic cop because in this text file, and it's just usually a few lines of, of text, 
uh, it's going to say you can, you're allowed to go check out these pages. You're not allowed to check out these pages. And then uh, it might say, here's a link to our XML sitemap. So that uh, having that traffic cop there, that robots text file is uh, really important for those search engines when they come in. And then building on that, uh, I mentioned the XML sitemaps. And this is um, a, a suggestion or the best practices from all of the search engines, Google, Bing, Yahoo, uh, that they prefer for you to give them a roadmap to your website instead of the old way of them actually crawling through every page on your website. So uh, this roadmap, this XML uh, sitemap is, is basically just all of the links to your pages on your website. And then from there, they can crawl your website and they're not having to crawl through graphics and navigation. It's just text and links. And, and, and this is kind of the new way of submitting your website to the search engines. So you want to submit that XML sitemap to uh, Google. They call it uh, Google Search Console now. They used to call it Webmaster Tools. Uh, you also want to submit that same XML sitemap to your um, to Bing uh, Webmaster Tools as well. And if you don't have um, if you don't have this then it's going to really jeopardize your chance to ranking high and also especially getting obituaries to rank because um, as soon as a new obituary is added to your site or a new page, but we're adding obituaries to our site more than anything else. Um, and then that XML sitemap gets updated. And if that XML sitemap has been um, submitted to the Google search count console, they're going to get notified immediately of that new page. So we want, we want those, we want Google to know, Hey, this is the originator of our content, not when some other company might be putting up an obituary in a couple of days. Uh, next that I want to cover are some, uh, other, other SEO factors to keep in mind. Uh, one is the age of your domain. And this is, obviously how old your domain name is. And uh, now, you know, we're getting into, you know, some funeral homes that have had websites for a couple of decades. And, you know, so these domain names are 20 years old. And to Google, th those are really strong domain names. So I have to warn you here, do not ditch your old domain name uh, for a new one, just because maybe it sounds better. So if heppelfuneral.com was a 12 year old domain name, that would be really strong. And, you know, for some reason, some of my buddies, you know, with their websites, they said, Hey, you know what? We changed our name and we think you should change your domain name to heppelcares.com. Now, sure, that might sound nice uh, to you and, and you might think it might sound nice to your clientele. And that, and if you've done that, that's fine. I'm just saying, do not ditch your old domain name for that. If you want to have that and you want to have that on your business cards, you can do that and then just have Heppel Cares redirect to heppelfuneral.com. Uh, there is also a slight advantage to having your keywords in your domain name. Now, uh, Google has kind of gone back and forth on, on this, but they're going to, having the word funeral in there from Google standpoint is going to help you more than having the word such as cares in there. And I would also recommend if you're, you know, if this is something new that you include the word funeral versus the initials FH. Again, don't, if you've already established it and you have a, you know, six year, 10 year, 15 year, 20 year domain name with FH in it, or maybe just your single domain name like heppel.com and you've built your, your brand on that, don't change it. Um, now there are times though that, uh, maybe, uh, as the as the business transitions, maybe from one generation to another, that you need to you've rebranded and you're going to change the domain name uh, to something else. And and this is fine. And it's probably you know it's probably in the long run better to have a consistent brand than holding on to that old domain name. What you want what you want to do is you know pick that new domain name. 
make sure that you take all of those, you know, all of your pages from your old site and, but do not, I repeat, do not delete that old domain name. Pay the 10 bucks a year and set up a number of what we would call um, 301 redirects. And what these will do is redirect. So if someone's going to heppelfuneral.com and um, and we, for some reason, maybe changed it to uh, heppelfamily.com, then, or maybe maybe I've merged with Brian, so it's going to become heppelyoung.com. We're not going to get rid of Heppel Funeral. We're going to, all of those old links, we're going to then create 301 redirects behind, behind the scenes to direct them to the new one. But I've seen clients go through this. They've gone through a rebrand. You know, they've had the domain name and then, you know, a year coat goes around and think, oh, we're not using that old domain name. And they just, they just let it go. And immediately the, they will drop from first position to like fourth or fifth or 10th or even off the first page. So it's really important to preserve that, um, uh, those authoritative domains. Now, you know, maybe in 15, 20 years, you can finally get rid of that other one, but you know, for 10 years anyway, or even for 20, for the $200, uh, for reserving that for, at $10 a year for 20 years, it's worth it to keep that in place, directing to the new domain. Uh, we're going to have a complete episode on how we've done this uh, in the future. So if you're, you know, if you're to that point, we're going to be transferring uh, from one, uh, maybe from one business to another or one generation to another, you're going to change the name. You're going to want to follow these steps because too often I see people do it. And the problem is lots of these marketing companies out there that are all about your brand and have a new message for you. That's great. They don't know how, Oh, changing a, a domain name, how that's going to affect your search engine rankings. Cause that's not their area of expertise. And that's why you're listening to us here because we'll give you that information. Uh, and then also I want to touch on the number of index pages on your website. So I back to your site, uh, colon search, you're going to see a number at the very top of the search results saying, you know, there's going to be 500 pages indexed by Google or you know, hopefully in the thousands, because every time you add a obituary to your website, it's going to be one more page indexed by the search engines. So, uh, this is really important. I highly, highly recommend to make sure that your obits are on your website, that you're not using a third party service for your obituaries, because that means that your website's going to sit around 30 or 50 pages and Google is going to think, Hey, this website never gets any bigger. It mustn't be as authoritative as this other site. That's a competing site for the same geographical and category keywords. Uh, because they continue to grow, you know, three or four new pages a, a week. So those are some established uh, on-site factors. There's a few, there's a few uh, new ones that I want to uh, bring to your attention too, and uh, you want to make sure that you have your your official company name, your address, and your phone number on every page of your website. Uh, this is probably best done in the, in the footer, but, and the Google calls it the NAP name, address, phone number, NAP, and that needs to be consistent. So don't, if, if my official name is Heppel Funeral Home Inc. And I'm thinking, oh, gee, I don't have any cremation keywords in there. So on my website, I'm going to call it something else. If it's not your official name, don't change it. Google wants to see consistency. So have, have that, whatever your official name is, comma, address, and you want it to be, if you're using street, spell street out. If you have ST period, you want ST period on all your pages. You want it to be, they want consistency. If you have brackets around the area code of your phone number, that's what they want consistently through your entire site. And also wherever your website and company is mentioned on the internet. Again, they, they want NAP to have consistency. 
Uh, another factor that we just found out a few years ago is Google likes to see a Google map uh, of your location on your Contact Us page because they know people going to the Contact Us page could be looking for directions. They want to make sure that their users are getting the best experience. And they feel that if there's a Google map on that page, it's going to help them out and they're going to reward you for that. And then a couple, two last factors, and these um, are becoming more and more important, is the page speed of your website. So Google wants to give, again, their, their customers who are the users of their, of their search engine, the best possible results and the best possible experience. And so they would rather um, give extra credit for people whose sites load fast than people who have websites that don't load fast because that's just a bad user experience. You can check out your own site page speed at um, by just Googling page speed insights. If you go to Google and type that in, you're going to go to a tool uh, for Google and they will tell you the speed of your website, both for a laptop and for a uh, mobile. And then speaking of mobile, as of, uh, I believe it was April 2015, uh, they called it Mo Mobile Geddon, where if your site wasn't mobile friendly, uh, it was going to have a negative effect on your search results for on mobile devices. So Google wants everyone to have mobile friendly sites. There's two versions of this. You can have a mobile responsive site or a mobile version of your website. Google prefers it to be mobile responsive, meaning that you have one website, not two different versions, but you have one website and it's responsive to the width of the device. So if it is on a desktop or a laptop, it's going to maybe have four columns on it. If someone's looking at it on an iPad, it's going to have maybe um, uh, two columns by two columns and then maybe on a phone, uh, all those columns are going to be stacked one on top of each other. So it conforms to the width of the device. And uh, you've probably been able just to see this yourself by um, bringing up your own website on your mobile phone. So that, and this is a pretty big nutshell, but those are the key on-site factors. Now, there are other on-site factors, but if you get these dialed in, you're going to be doing better than 75% of your competitors out there. So, uh, Brian, that's, oh, <laughs> that was a bit, um, bit of a long tangent there, but I just wanted to get, make sure that we covered all of those points. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, that, that is quite the, uh, fire hose to take a drink from, but <laughs> I think you certainly covered a lot there and you can see why a lot of people ask you for help <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep track of that. So, just to dial a little further, I know today's topic is a very technical topic and we are getting into a level of detail some people have never even heard before. But now that you've covered that nutshell, as you called it, how is on-site SEO accomplished? Sure. Well, um, first of all, you want to have a review uh, or audit of your site just to make sure that you are following the best practices. And uh, you know, once you have that, uh, most of the time, uh, sites that have been built in the last three years, you're going to be able to either do this yourself or have your web developer do it for you, is to make those adjustments. Uh, there are some older technologies that are still being offered. Um, and you can, one question to ask your developers are, um, you know, hey, our website isn't, isn't ranking very well. Um, it looks like we have way more pages than our competitors do. How, you know, why, why isn't that the case? And if they give you an answer of, oh, well, you know, you need to hire an SEO company to help you with that. That's the wrong answer. There's lots of things as we've discovered that can be done on the website itself. Uh, and we'll, we'll, in, a, in future episodes too, we'll dive deeper into, um, how you can promote your content for, for free, how you can, uh, you know, avoid having to spend five hundred, a thousand dollars a month on a, ex, a third party SEO company. Um, but in a, again, in a nutshell, you just want to 
have a, you know, have an audit. You can, that site colon search itself, um, helps out. Uh, but, um, uh, you can also, you know, get someone like us to perform something a, a little bit more in depth. Uh, and then you can take that and say to your web developer, Hey, we need, you know, can you fix these for us? And it's also really important to make sure that you have, um, an XML sitemap and a robots text file. Uh, again, these are things that, um, uh, will be, will be discovered with a, with an audit. Um, and, um, and again, should be very easy for your web developers to create those for you. And when we kind of bring this all together, um, if you, if you build this and the site's built correctly and you kind of just keep those other thoughts in mind about, you know, when you're writing the pages of your content, now that you have an idea of how it works, keeping those main topics separated, and you continually put your obituaries out there on your own website, that over time, you're going to build a very solid platform for your, um, you know, for your online presence. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, let you know that, um, uh, you know, if you want us to perform an SEO audit for you for your website, uh, and again, there's no cost or obligation for this, all that you need to go do is go to funeralresults.com forward slash web audit, and we will uh, provide you with a complete analysis of your uh, of your website. It will actually contain both on-site features as well as off-site features, but it's a good thing uh, for you to... Um, you know, for you just to check out and uh, then you can at least benchmark where you're at and then ask your current developer to uh, fix any of the errors that, that might be present there. All right. Well, that is a lot of material, a lot of useful material. And uh, we do want to make sure that you take time to claim that SEO audit and just see how you're doing online. So I just echo Rob's comments there. Great, Brian. Now, well, you know, one thing that we want to talk about is uh, what's uh, what's been happening at Funeral Results Marketing. This is the new marketing brand that has come out of uh, the Funeral Futurist Consultancy. I'm really happy to have Brian uh, working with me. And uh, Brian, maybe if you want to share what uh, you know what we've been working on over the last couple of weeks. Sure. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Regarding the website. We're pretty excited regarding the content that we've put on that. Obviously, you can get a good look. It's pretty clean and quick read to see various ways funeral results marketing is able to help you strengthen your business, grow your market share, find out what's happening competitively in the online space, whether we're talking about you or a competitor. There's a number of different ways that we can help you grow the business and we think our website will give you a fast, clean overview of what that is, as well as some great nuggets on ways to strengthen your business or better understand how to save money. And every business owner seems to appreciate that. So with that, I think what we'll do here is transition into me asking a question I love to ask. And that's to you, Mr. Funeral Director. What's your burning question about online marketing for your funeral home? If you will leave it here, we will try to answer it in an upcoming episode of Strategy Talks. But we'd like to hear what you're hearing. We'd like to hear what you're thinking about. So please leave us a comment on the blog or give it a rating on iTunes or Google Play. And that just helps us move things forward and make it better for you in the future. And, of course, that's our goal. So, Rob, I want to pass it back over to you just to quick recap of what we did today. Sure. Thanks, Brian. And uh, yeah, just, you know, we talked today about uh, on-site SEO. Um, there's a number of factors that uh, uh, you have or your web, your web hosts have on your website that you can um, make sure that they are optimized for your best chances of ranking. So uh, whether it's, you know, make it, well, it's making sure that you have your keywords uh, and the two categories of keywords, you have your your category keywords, which would be funeral, cremation, etc. Your geographical keywords, which would be your city or town, and you know make sure that those are represented on your site. 
And then there are, you know, some of the other factors such as uh, making sure that you have a robots text file and a XML sitemap uh, con configured for your site. Also make sure that you consistently have your, your name, address, and phone number, the NAP, uh, on every page of your website. Uh, usually it's in the footer. I've seen it in the header sometimes, but uh, in the footer is a good place to have it. And you want to use that exact same format uh, throughout the entire internet when your business is being referenced. Uh, and also make sure that you put a Google map on your Contact Us page. Uh, and that's about it in a nutshell. Again, uh, we can, uh, if you need to drill in a little bit deeper for this, uh, take us up on the uh, on the audit of your website. But um, but what I'll do right now is just turn it back to Brian. He's going to uh, give you a challenge on what you could do right now to um, just give yourself a quick overview of your website. Thanks, Rob. So today's challenge <clears throat> to see how you are doing is to go on to Google and in the browser bar there, or actually not even Google, just in your browser, you can type in the word site, S-I-T-E, colon, and then your URL. So robinheppel.com. <clears throat> you do not need the www in there. It's just site, colon, your domain name, dot com. And then make sure that you are seeing both your category keywords and your geographical keywords in the titles on those pages. If you're not seeing those things, as we covered today, that is going to be hurting your search engine score and decreasing the number of shoppers coming across your website. So with that, I'll kick it back to you, Rob. Well, great, Brian. And as we wrap up this episode, uh, we look forward to, uh, Brian, for uh, your upcoming episode on using website analytics to boost website performance. And uh, just to you, the listener, I'd like to thank you for spending uh, time with us today. It's our goal for you to serve as, as many families as possible and provide them more meaningful services. Make sure you check back soon for another episode of Strategy Talks by Funeral Results Marketing. This has been Brian Young and Robin Heppel. This has been another episode of Strategy Talks with Robin Heppel and Brian Young. To ask a question or leave a comment, visit funeralresultsmarketing.com forward slash talks. To make sure that you never miss an episode, you can subscribe to this podcast for free on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher.